Russell, you, I know you are a, a, a polymath across history. What uh, periods, whether it's the 1940s or, or whatever inflationary periods, support the argument that inflation inherently will, uh, you know, is, is, is inclined to benefit value companies more than growth companies? Yeah. So the, so the data set goes back to, I think it's 1929, which is the French FAMA data set where they split out value and growth and there are lots of quibbles, as you know, about how you divine the two. But anyway, that's what we're going to use because that's the best thing available. I wrote a large report on that for clients Christmas 2020. And there aren't a lot of times when inflation kind of really breaks out. But, but obviously going from the 30s to the 40s is one of them. Uh, America brings in price controls, of course, during World War II. So the, you know, the actual rate of inflation is significantly higher than it's reported. But the biggest outperformance ever of value relative to growth was going from the 30s into the 40s from going from a deflation to what is a, you know, the, the sort of inflation you get associated with warfare. And then you get the same thing happening the next time when you go from the 60s to the 70s. Now, is that a big enough sample? I know people watching this will think that that is an incredibly long period from 1929, but actually you've only got a couple of samples uh, in there. But anyway, for what it's worth, two, two examples, both of them worked out pretty well for owning value uh, relative, relative to growth. I have looked uh, recently at more detail within... Uh, using the Ibbotson data, looking at the, that long kind of bear market from 1966 to 1982. Remember, the Dow Jones hits 1,000 in 66, and by 82, it's at 600. So that's a hell of a bear market, uh, particularly in a world of high inflation. And then you look at what sectors of the stock market actually managed to preserve wealth, reinvested dividends, compounding, rising faster than inflation. And once again, you get value stocks, but particularly mid-cap value and small-cap stocks as well. So that doesn't mean to say this has to repeat, but it's a, at least a intriguing sign that for someone who's concerned about inflation, that there will be sections of the equity market, not the equity market, but there will be sections of the equity market where you can outperform. Uh, and I think value is one of them. And value is global. You know, it's not just America we're talking about here. If I was to look at all the equities in all the world, the most expensive are the US, uh, even value stocks. Now, if I start looking elsewhere in the world, maybe Japan, I will find very cheap, well, in my opinion, very cheap value stocks. If I look at certain industries all around the world, which have had to compete with China and where that competition may be lifting, you'll find very cheap stocks. So uh, I do think it's value, but not necessarily American value stocks. But uh, at least historically, they have been able to play a role. So twice it's worked. Uh, if you want to build a portfolio around two, uh, two samples, then uh, let's build it on value stocks. 